RESTIC is a command line tool that you can use to back up files to a USB device, network, or to various cloud services. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use RESTIC to back up to a USB device. In the videos after this, I will show you how to use RESTIC to back up to Amazon S3 in Backblaze. To get started, I'm on the RESTIC website and I'll go to installation. You can install RESTIC using Scoop as shown in this page for Windows with the Scoop command. But since most people don't have Scoop installed, I'm going to show you how to install RESTIC manually. We'll go to the GitHub page and go to download. And we will find the version for Windows. We'll get the 64-bit zip and download that. Once downloaded, go ahead and extract the package and copy this executable. I'm going to place this on my C drive, the root of my C drive, in a folder called RESTIC. You can place this wherever you like, but I'm going to place it here. And then I'm going to rename it just RESTIC. Next, we need to open our advanced system settings and add this folder to the path. Environment variables will go to edit path, click on new, and browse to the RESTIC folder. Click OK. And instead of having to be in the RESTIC folder to run the RESTIC command, we can be anywhere on our system, open the terminal, and we should be able to use the RESTIC command here. I'm also going to create a folder in this RESTIC folder called cron. And this is going to be where I place script for automating our backup. And I'll show you how to do that later in this video. Now that RESTIC is installed, we need to start setting up a backup. I'm going to be backing up this media folder at the root of my C drive. It contains documents, pictures, and videos. I have a single video here. I have pictures, a couple of images here, and a document, which has example.txt. And I'm going to be backing that up to my Samsung USB stick here. So to get started, we'll use the RESTIC command with the init option. This will tell RESTIC that we're going to be creating a new repository. Or backup. In RESTIC, backups are just called repositories. We use minus R for repo, and then we're going to specify the location of our backup. My backup is going to be located on E, and we'll give it a name. I'll call it RESTIC Backup. Next, we need to supply a password for our backup or repository. This password will be used whenever you want to do any actions with the backup. Once that's done, we get a message stating that we are not to lose the password because if we do, we will lose the data we won't be able to recover from. We'll notice that on my E drive, my USB device, we now have a RESTIC backup folder, and this will contain all the backup data. So let's go ahead and run this backup. To run a backup, we'll do RESTIC minus R, and now the destination of our backup, which is located at E, RESTIC backup. Then we'll use the backup command, followed by what we want to backup. I want to backup C media and hit enter. We'll enter our password, and we see it's been backed up. It's giving us information about what's been new, what's changed, and what's been modified, as well as the size that we've added and the time. It also gives us this snapshot ID, which we can use to look at the contents of this backup. If we copy this string here and we do rustic minus R on our repository and do an LS for list followed by the snapshot ID, it will show us all the contents of our backup. So in that last backup that we just ran, it's backed up our media folder with its contents, the documents, the pictures, and the videos. I'm going to add this example.txt file to my media folder. I know I already have it in documents. And so now we'll run the backup again. Again, RESTIC minus R, the location of our backup, the backup command, and then the source of our backup, the media folder. We we'll enter. Now 
and we'll see one new file has been added and we're given a new snapshot ID. We copy that and do another LS. We'll see now, not only do we have our documents, pictures, and videos, but the example txt file that's at the root of the media folder has also been added. Let's look at snapshots in more detail. We just ran two backups, so we should have two snapshots. If we do restic minus r in our repository and do snapshots, it gives us a list of all of our backups along with the time, the host, tags which you can also apply and the paths this is our first backup and this is our second one and we're given the ids for each snapshot how restic works is each time you back up it creates a snapshot and keeps track of all the new modified and deleted files and using the snapshot ids you can look through these backups and recover data using the ls latest latest can be used anywhere where snapshot id can be used I'll use ls latest and this will show me everything that we backed up in our latest snapshot. And if I took the first snapshot ID and did an ls on that, notice how in our first backup we didn't have the example.txt like we have in the second backup. You can also compare snapshots using the dip command. Let's clear the screen here and list those snapshots again. And we're going to compare each snapshot. So we'll take the first snapshot. We'll do restic diff. And we'll copy the first snapshot ID and then the second one. And restic will now compare these snapshots. And we see what's been changed and what's been added. So this plus sign here says We've added the example.txt. One new file was added. No directories were added or changed or removed. And we see the size that's been added. You can also remove snapshots. Let's say I wanted to remove this last snapshot. I'll copy its ID. And I'll do restic forget command. And then the snapshot ID. Or if you want to back up the latest snapshot, you could just type latest. So I'll just put the snapshot ID and enter. And we'll see it successfully deleted that snapshot. And if we list our snapshots again, we'll see we only have the one snapshot. And we'll do ls and latest. We'll see that the text Example text.txt is no longer in our backup because we deleted that second snapshot. I'm going to run my backup again so that we can add the example.txt. And so now we have two snapshots. I want to show you how to recover data from your snapshots. I'm going to I'm going to restore from our last snapshot. So I'll do restic minus r followed by the repository then we're going to use the restore command and I'm going to use latest we could put the snapshot ID here if we wanted to specify a specific snapshot I'm going to restore from the latest snapshot and then we're going to use the target flag this is going to tell Rustic where we want to place our restored data this could be a location like C somewhere, but since I'm on my desktop, I'll just create a folder called restored. And so we're going to restore from our latest snapshot in our desktop in a folder called restored. we we'll enter and we'll see at our desktop, a folder has been created, restored. And in it, we have our C drive with the media folder, and it contains everything in our latest snapshot, including the example.txt and our pictures and videos and documents. Let's go ahead and delete this restored folder. And let's say I want to
restore from our first snapshot. This is the snapshot that didn't have the example.txt at the root. I'm going to restore that one. So it will run the restore command again. And instead of saying latest, I'm going to supply that first snapshot ID. Restore from this snapshot ID into my desktop in a folder called restore. And now in our newly created restored folder, we have everything that was in our first backup, which did not include that example.txt. Let's say we only wanted to restore a specific file from a certain snapshot. Let's clear the screen here. Let's do an ls on our snapshots. And I'm going to copy this path cmedia example.txt. And we're going to run our restore again, except this time, I know I want to restore from my latest snapshot, so I'll put latest target. We're going to restore in the folder restore on our desktop. I will delete the restore folder that we have here. And now I only want to include this example.txt in my restored data. We can do this with the include flag and then the path to the folder or file. In this case, it's going to be C media example txt. You can also surround this in double quotes. And so we're saying, we're stored from our latest snapshot in a folder called restored on our desktop and only include example.txt in our media folder. Hit enter. And we'll see in our restored folder now, we have only our example txt and not those other folders that was in our snapshot. Likewise, you can exclude files and folders from a restore. Let's clear the screen and now let's do this restore again. And we're going to restore everything in our latest snapshot, except, and we're going to use the exclude flag. We're going to restore everything except our documents folder. We'll enter. And now in our restored folder in media, we have our pictures and videos, our example txt, but not the documents folder. Let's look at excluding and including files and folders. I've done an ls on my latest snapshot, but we know we have our documents, pictures, and videos. I've created a new folder here in my media source called stuff, which has a text document and a script. I'm going to run a backup, but I'm not going to include this folder in my next backup. So we're going to exclude the stuff folder. We can do backup media and we'll use the exclude flag and what we want to exclude. I'm going to exclude the media stuff folder and we'll see nothing has changed and if we do an ls on our latest snapshot we'll see that that stuff folder is not in our snapshots let's look at a more efficient way of excluding files and folders from our backup if i go back to my rustic folder and create a file called exclude txt in this file we can list everything that we don't want to include in our backup so for example in my media folder let's say I want to not include the stuff folder again let's just say exclude from C media stuff and we'll save that and back at our command line, where we have exclude, we can now put the flag exclude file and point rustic to the path of our exclude file. In this case, it's going to be in our rustic folder. C rustic exclude dot txt. So now we're saying back up our media folder 
but exclude everything that's listed in our exclude txt file. In this case, media stuff. And we'll see the backup is complete. We're doing ls on the latest. And again, we don't see the stuff folder included in our backup. We can do something similar to only include certain directories or folders. I have this stuff folder here in my media folder. I'm going to move it actually to my desktop. And in my rustic folder, I'm going to create a file called include. And in this folder, we're going to list every folder that we want to include in our backup. So we're going to back up our media folder and our C and desktop stuff. So we're going to tell Rustic to back up everything in our media folder and back up everything in our stuff folder in our desktop. We'll save this and come back to our terminal. This time we're going to be using the files from flag and tell Rustic to only include these paths in our include text. We enter and we do an ls on latest. We can see that not only has it backed up everything in our media folder, but now we also have what's in our desktop stuff folder. So this is a great way to back up from different locations on your computer or network. Next, I'll show you how to create a script that you can use to quickly and easily back up your files using Rustic. We'll just copy our last command that we used. And in my Rustic folder, I created this cron folder, but I'll just go ahead and delete it instead. What we'll do is just create a text file or cmd file. We'll call it cron.cmd. And in this file, we're just going to copy our command. And the only thing we need to add here is a password file. So I'll go ahead and create a new text document and call it password.txt and in this password file I'll just provide the password for our repository and save that and back in our cron file we're going to supply rustic with the password file using the password file flag and point to C Rustic password.txt and we'll hit save. So this will make it so that we don't have to actually enter the password manually when we run the script. This is important when we want to automate the backup. I've also gone ahead and added this other text file, some more text.txt. So this should be added in our new backup. So we'll go ahead and double click on our command. We'll tell Renote to run. And now if we do an LS, we'll see in our desktop stuff folder, we have some more text added in our latest snapshot. I'll go ahead and in my stuff folder again, I'll add yet another text file. This time we're going to automate our backup by running this cron cmd command using task scheduler. So we'll open up task scheduler and we'll create a new basic task. We'll call it rustic backup. And we can configure this however we like. We can run the backup when we log in, when the computer starts, we can do it daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll just have it set to daily and say 12 p.m. every day and we want to start a program 
and we're going to locate our command, our CMD file. And then we'll hit next and finish. And there is our Rustic backup, which should run every day at 12 p.m. Let's go ahead and run this task manually just to prove that it works and that we have another text file in our backup. So we'll right click and say run. And it's done. If we go to our terminal and do an ls on latest, we should see this another text file. And of course, our cron job worked and we have updated our backup. Let's look at our snapshots now. And we see all of our snapshots. Let's do a full restore of our latest snapshot. We'll do Rustic minus R. And we'll do restore latest. And we're going to restore to the target folder, which is I'm going to restore to my C drive in a folder called restored. If we look at our C drive, we'll see a folder called restored with our media and our users, which contains our desktop, our stuff folder with all of our files, and our media folder with all of its files and documents. So let's look at Rustic for Windows. It's a pretty lightweight and easy to use backup tool. The only thing I don't like about Rustic is that it doesn't support compression. So if compression is a big deal to you, especially if you're backing up to the cloud. Be aware that it does not yet support REST, but it does have really good deduplication and overall pretty fast when it comes to backing up. In the next video, we'll be looking at backing up to Amazon S3 using RESTIC.